pitch. Their connecting flight was delayed and they barely made it on time. So we sincerely thank them for, uh, you know, taking, uh, you know, making this special effort to be on the call. Uh, I will present CI India results for uh, Q2 C24 and also for H1 C24. Let's start with Q2 C24 results for the India operations on page 7. Sales in the India business was Rs. 14,463 million, which has grown 8% year on year versus Q2 C23 and is also marginally higher on a sequential basis. This growth is also slightly higher than the weighted average market growth. If you recall, we had said that our growth in the past quarters had been hampered by slow ramp up of certain orders. These orders have started ramping back as seen in the improving growth figures over the last few quarters in the India business. So if you look at the quarterly year on year growth in our India business, it was 1% in Q3 C23, 4% in Q4 C23, 6% in Q1 C24, and 8% in Q2 C24. While sales in India grew by 8%, EBITDA grew by 16%, EBIT by 21%, and EBT by 20%. EBITDA margin in India without any one-time impact was uh, has crossed 18% for the first time and it was 18.1% in Q2 C24. While we had reported an EBITDA margin of 18.7% in India in Q1 C24, that included a one-time government grant at our aluminium business, without which the EBITDA margin was approximately 17.2%. So even on a sequential basis, there is a significant improvement in EBITDA margin. EBIT margin in Q1, uh, Q2 C24 for the India business was 14.4% versus 12.8% in Q2 C23, and EBT margin was 13.8% versus 12.3% in the uh, same quarter last year. The margins are thus a result of improved profitability of the Indian operations. Overall, Indian operations continue their journey to match the global standards of the CIE group. On page 8, we have the results for the European operations of CIE India for, for the quarter Q2 C24. The slowdown in the European light vehicles market, uh, as well as the slowdown at Metal Castello, Something that we have spoken about in the past calls has caused, uh, uh, you know, has significantly impacted the results. Sales were at INR 7604 million, which are down year on year by 11%. And if you compare with the light vehicles market data, which is X of Russia, you know, if you, uh, if you look at what is happening in Europe without taking consideration of Russia, it is down by 7%. Uh, the market. Uh, you know, just a note here, from now on, we'll present the European market data without Russia, because as we know, uh, the commercial contact between Europe and Russia is, uh, is, is not there and, and is not expected to be there for the next uh, uh, many quarters. EBITDA margin for the European operations in Q2 C24 was 17% versus 19.2% in Q2 C23 and 16% in Q1 C24. EBIT uh, in Q1 C24 was 13.1% uh, versus 12.6% in Q1 C24 and EBT 11.4% versus 11%. We have taken note of the sales drop in the European operations and corrective, operation, and corrective actions have already started to adjust uh, the operations to the uh, lower sales uh, sales uh, volume. On page nine, we see the consolidated CIE India Q2 C24 results. Consolidated sales for INR 22 billion, similar to Q2 C23. EBITDA INR 3.9 billion at a margin of 17.7 percent. EBIT INR 3.1 billion at a margin of 13.9 and EBT INR 2.8 million at a margin of 13%. The first half H1C24 results for our Indian operations are on page 11. Sales increased by 7%, uh, 
versus H1C20 high base. Two-wheeler demand seems to have recovered in the last couple of quarters, and the half-yearly growth is 20% plus. Tractors are also showing signs of of recovery. We expect H2 to be better than H1 in India. On page 12, we have the H1C24 results for our European operations. The impact of slowing light vehicle sales and slowdown in Metal Castello's customer segment has contributed to a 9% drop in sales. The EV orders that we were executing, executing have also seen some slowdown from the customer side. The H1C24 sales are INR 16.5 million. EBITDA margin was 16.5% in H1C24, EBIT margin 12.8, EBT margin 11.2% and PAT margin 9.9%. While making year-on-year -year comparisons, please note that H1C23 PAT included profit from discontinued operations of CFG. On page 13, we have the H1C24 consolidated results of CI India. Sales were INR 45.4 billion, which is a nominal growth over H1C23. The EBITDA margin was 17.7% versus 17.4% in H1C23. EBIT 13.9% versus 13.7. EBT 13% versus 12.7%. And PAT 9.9% versus 12.8%. And uh, this drop in PAT margin was because of the one-time uh, profit from discontinued operations last year. Overall, the good performance in India has been offset uh, by the declining market in Europe. On page 15, you will see our abridged consolidated balance sheet, which shows the healthy state of CI India. Return ratios have continued to be healthy. Return on net assets has been maintained about 20%, and return on equity is at 14.4% and almost reaching the 15% mark. The cash flows are shown on page 16. The company generated operating cash flows to the extent of 76% of consolidated EBITDA. Growth capex for the first half of the year was INR 1.05 billion, largely focused on projects in India. Cash outflow due to dividends was INR uh, 1897 million due to the doubling of dividend to rupees five per share. If you move to page 18, where we have shown other details, uh, the, there the other operating revenue in the India operations in Q2C24 is significantly lower than Q2C23. And this is because we have started to reuse a large chunk, chunk of scrap that is generated and we are using it in-house. So the other operating income for India in Q2C24 is significantly lower than in Q2C23 because we are reusing the scrap in-house. We are confident that we can utilize opportunities that arise and face challenges that we confront. All of this we'll do with agility. And with that, we proceed to Q&A. Thank you. The first question is from the line of Sikandan from Goodwill. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Uh, is my voice clear? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Yeah, my first question was regarding, you know, our working capital cycle and cash flow from operations. That seems to have, uh, you know, gone down and our receivables seems to have shot up. So what what really happened there in H1? So I think that, uh, Vikas. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I didn't get the name, but um, the working capital and especially on the receivables is because we did factoring and uh, build... Uh, and discounting at the 31st December 23, which we have stopped doing uh, on 30th June. Therefore, the number has gone up. Okay, so our factoring and discounting has stopped off. Uh, yes, Any particular reason for that? 
No, right now we are having enough cash, so right now we are not doing it. Okay. And what kind of margin benefit do you think we can get from this? No, this was finance cost, so not so much. Ah, finance. Ah, so finance cost benefit that we can get from this? So that was only uh, done with, uh, you know, uh, in December. So that was about 20 million, uh, if I'm not wrong, INR. Okay, so now this would be a some that H1 would be a good working cycle, you know, guidance. Yeah. It will be similar to this and going forward. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, my second question was, you know, H2 was supposed to, you know, be when we'll get the growth in this year. So, are we on path for that? Uh, yes, we are on track. You know, that's why, you know, we, uh, you know, we, I did talk about the improvement in growth trajectory from the last few quarters. So, if you look at, you know, the last three quarters are four percent growth in India, six percent growth in India, and eight percent growth in India. So, in India, very clearly, you see that. Now, coming back to Europe, uh, of course, in Europe, H2 is is traditionally weaker than H1. You know, that's the seasonality effect. You have August holidays of three weeks, and you will also have, uh, uh, you know, one week holiday in December. So, uh, sequentially, H2 is always uh, uh, weaker than H uh, than uh, than H1. And but we do see weakness in Europe uh, very clearly. Uh, the markets are down both for the off-road market as well as the light vehicles market. The off-road market is down by uh, by much larger uh, numbers than, uh, but even the light vehicle market is down. Uh, you know, and and you can see that in our presentation. So in India, definitely, what we have said, H2 greater than H1, we we still think that is going to happen. In Europe. Uh, H2 traditionally is, is uh, worse off than H1. So year on, even year on year, H2 is not looking good because of the weakness. Is that correct? Uh, at this stage, you know, I don't want to make any uh, definitive, uh, you know, like the forecast keeps okay. changing uh, yeah. in Europe. But yes, the markets in Europe are weak at this point of time. Markets in Europe are weak. Okay. And... Uh, Anything on getting some of our European customers like the Volkswagen Group and others, you know, into our foray in India uh, or are they just too small or something? Volkswagen is small in India, you know, and, uh, you, you know, we have a very large customer base in India, including, uh, you know, some, including, uh, you know, European OEMs in India. So it's not that we don't have, but European OEMs in India are, you know, are, are smaller. You know, our biggest customers are, of course, uh, Mahindra in India, Bajaj, Maruti. These are the three biggest customers. Tata Motors, uh, you know, the four-wheeler customers. You have Hyundai, Kia, John Deere. So, you know, we have many customers in India. You know, like as if you go back to our, uh, you know, annual report or the investor presentation that we made at, uh, you know, at, in at the end of the year of C24, you will see that there are at least 20 customers in India with very significant uh, uh, revenue base. So we are a very well diversified company when it comes to customer base in India. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. The next question. And the next question is from the line of Dinesh Gandhi from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, this is uh, Jinesh Kandi from Ambit Capital. A uh, couple of questions from my side. One is, uh, when we look at uh, the European business, uh, there has been uh, clearly a slowing down of EV sales. Uh, so, uh, as a company who had been uh, slowly pivoting towards electric vehicles, uh, uh, what are the changes do we need to make in the business uh, given that we're slowing down of EVs? Uh, that's the first question. What changes in business, uh, Jinesh? Can you repeat that? Given that uh, we were also preparing for electrification in Europe, oh. uh, and now we are seeing uh, yeah, EVs they are being seeing slower adoption. Adoption. Do we need to make any changes in our business now, uh, or it uh, remains status quo for us? No, uh, uh, okay. Jin of course, and Ander will uh, answer more, but yes, because of this whole slowdown on the EV penetration side, 
there is a lot of uncertainty in the minds of the European customer also. So you are clearly seeing the effect on the entire market. So it is not just the EV orders that are delayed because of, you know, the EV orders are delayed because the customers are also a bit in wait and watch mode. But, you know, I'll request Ander to elaborate more on that. Yes. Yes, because you are right. Uh, the reality in, in the European market is that now all this uh, electrification process has been a slowdown, mainly because of the elimination of the uh, certain certain subsidies that certain c countries were giving to the electric vehicles. And this is generating certain uncertainty and volatility in the market. So what we think is that all this electric electrification process will continue the growth will continue in the future, but at a lower pace. Okay, so uh, we see a delay in this process, and we can expect two, three years. I mean, just rough figures because we, nobody knows what will happen. But we expect two, three years of delay in all this electrification process. So in the meanwhile, we continue working as as usual. So the internal combustion engine components will continue being supplied to the market so that is a good thing for us and we are we continue working and, and let's say we are getting new orders from the customers in the electrification side so the reality is that all this delay will give us the time the enough time to prepare ourselves in this transition so the transition will be softer than expected and I think that is positive for the uh, European companies. Well, got it, got it. And the second question pertains to the M&A uh, part of it. So one is obviously India, we have been looking for acquisitions to strengthen our presence in plastics and maybe with some other customers as well. Uh, but in Europe, uh, do we also now look at acquisitions given that uh, uh, some of our competitors uh, would be seeing some stress because of higher interest rates and leverage on balance sheet. Are we open to acquisitions in Europe as well? Not really. Let's say that uh, it's not our preferred route right now to invest in in Europe in in the in different countries. Let's say uh, stressed assets. It's not the strategy. We prefer to focus our efforts on the Indian market where we think there will be a development in the future. Perhaps we can find any uh, company that can uh, be consolidated with our uh, our capacities and could make sense. But in this moment, let's say that the, the focus continues to be in, in India. Uh, got it. And lastly, in terms of CAPEX, uh, our Guidance would remain same, five six percent of revenues. Or we are uh, increasing any of these uh, uh, investments in India. Yes, let's say that the the average in the first half has been about four percent of our total turnover, so slightly less than the five percent that we have as a standard. But we think that in the in the second half of the year we will recuperate because there are a lot of programs uh, on investments ongoing. And by the end of the year, we will be around 5.5% 5, 5 .5 of the total uh, turnover. And mainly, main amount of this capex will be focused on, on India, of course. Uh, got it, got it. Uh, great. Thanks and all the best. Yes, thanks, Janesh. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Just getting mind for the. Participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Nitesh from Cliff Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Um, hi, my question is for Andam. Um, so I just wanted to ask, what is the plan on roof systems? Why has it been kept outside CI India? We have heard like three reasons in the last three years. In 2022, it used to be, you know, due to the Mahindra name. In 23, it was because of Chinese ownership. In 24, it was tier two versus tier one. You know, these kind of um, change in reasons is somewhat I'm not able to follow and frankly uh, not expected from a group uh, like CI. Uh, it seems uh, the parent is trying to, you know, keep the roof systems business out of the listed CI entity, CI India. So going forward, will the parent also enter plastics, castings, forgings on its own in India? 
can I take that answer before you know answer yes, comment? Yes, yes, because you 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 will explain much better than me. Yes. Uh, you know, you talked about different reasons. They are not different reasons. Uh, you know, if if you allow me, of course, number one, we have to say that. Uh, this business is CIE Spain's business, not our business. So it is not our decision, it is their decision. But I'll explain the rationale, you know, what this business is about and and what the thinking process is. Of course, uh, you know, people will have different views. Uh, first, but first let me say that it, they're not different reasons. Root Systems business is a tier one business. Now, what is a tier one? Uh, you, as you would be aware, the component industry has two kinds of companies largely. You have tier one companies, you have tier two companies. Tier two companies, largely of our kind, we supply parts, maybe complex parts, subsystems, but mostly this is based on the drawings provided to us either by the OEM or a tier one company. So, for example, crankshaft. Crankshaft goes into an engine. The engine supplier or the OEM will give me the drawing of the crankshaft and I make it. So I compete on operational excellence, as I keep, keep saying, investment discipline, diversification. And then you have a set of companies like tier one, like engine manufacturers, driveline manufacturers, steering system manufacturers, seating system manufacturers. They compete on customized R&D and they work with a fewer set of customers, but their basic uh, competitive driver is uh, R&D. And you know, and it is, they, they generate the drawing and then either they make it in-house or they can, you know, take the help of tier two suppliers to make it. Roof systems is a tier one business. All the other businesses are tier two businesses. Okay, and therefore, when you say he will CIE also look at plastics or forgings or this separately, the answer is no. Because CIE India, since the last 10 years, has focused on uh, on tier, you know, uh, tier two, uh, two businesses. Tier one business would require a lot of investment in R&D. Right now, for the roof system business, the R&D is centralized. In fact, this is. Uh, a fairly large business within CIE, and India is an extremely minuscule part of, of that business. In fact, wherever these businesses operate in CIE worldwide, in any other geography, they operate independently. So, for example, even if in any country there is forgings of C uh, or aluminium of CIE or machining of CIE and roof systems, they are managed separately. So it is an independent business managed separately within CIE itself, and the main reason is tier one R and D. Now coming back to your uh, your uh, your question that in 2021 we talked about uh, uh, you know Mahindra and 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 there in tier one businesses there is greater sensitivity because the there is R and D sharing between OEM and and the uh, and the tier one supplier. That is why any such name, any association with any one particular OEM has, you know, creates uh, anxiety with other OEMs, that, which is much lesser in the case of tier two or non-existent in the case of tier two companies. So if you see whatever reason we are talking about, all of them pertain to this particular difference. So to answer your question, will something else also not happen? Roof Systems is the only tier one business within CIE. Everything else is tier two and that's the reason why we have always maintained that the one difference in portfolio between CIE Global and CIE India is plastics. So they do plastics, we don't do plastics in India, we do composites in India but not plastics. So that is the reason why, you know, uh, uh, this distinction was there, and the reasons are fairly consistent. I hope I have answered your question. Uh, yes, yes. So, uh, no, where I was coming from is uh, CI Spain, you know, both the tier one and tier two are in the same entity right now, and, you know, CI India has always been our flagship entity. 
so you know now what kind of message does it send that you know just the roof systems is outside of your flagship entity in india you know because effectively it's the same 15 20 customers um, which we will be sharing with the roof systems also with ci india has and now that you know there's no mahindra name it is more of a reason you know to uh, integrate both the companies now again this is again not this decision is not in our purview but again let me attempt the reasoning behind it no it is true that uh, customers are similar but it won't be you know the number of customers that tier one company services will be much lesser like for example we proudly tell you that we i just uh, told the other questioners that we have 20 company customers in india with substantial revenue base a tier one company may will probably not have that because they have customized r&d and they can deal with very few oems therefore the oem sensitivity that we are talking about but coming back to your question within you know even within cie that is what i was trying to explain they are handled independently of the tier two business and it is centralized r&d yes india is uh, they have business in india but it is a very small part of the global business and two let me also uh, suggest this that let me also say this that you know this was a business that has come to cie via acquisitions made in 2009 and 2018 or 19 uh, exact date i'll have to uh, check uh, and they have been doing business in india predating cie india you know cie india was formed in the year 2013 and they have been predating that that they have been doing that business separately maybe you know out of china or whatever the therefore china was also mentioned uh, in in your question uh, or you know but but it is largely a global business run out of you know like you know the 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 centralized r&d is in europe so uh, china is just one one geography that is serviced uh, by uh, you know by uh, you know by ci gold day as as this business is called so uh, you know so that is why you know this decision has been taken as i said you know people can have different opinions i'm just trying to give you the business logic that has been used by the cie group again let me reiterate it is not my business logic it is frankly the decision is not in the perimeter of cie india it's a decision which has been taken by cie spain because it's a, it's a business owned by cie spain got it, got it. thank you so much sir yeah thanks the line of duty thing from arian capital market limited please go ahead thank you for the opportunity sir my question is on the order book side if you can give us some visibility like earlier the um, new order book was uh, consists 40% of ev so now uh, things is not uh, pretty that good uh, as uh, you know earlier so just wanted uh, the visibility on the order book side and ev uh, versus it side okay i will take that uh, because yeah in 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 india the we had the we have had in the first half of the year a total new order book of about 5 billion rupees per year per year of uh, let's say new new projects out of them 30% approximately are for electric vehicles so that means that in the near future our share of electric vehicles components will continue growing so this is 30% in india and in europe where we have a slightly lower amount of new 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 businesses or new orders nominations we have about 2.2 billion rupees of new orders and in we have 55% of them are uh, pure electric vehicles that means that the electrification pace speed of the electrification in in europe as we all know is is much faster than uh, in india so the trend uh, is consistent with our strategy where we will be 
slowly, slowly changing and tra making the transition from internal combustion to electrification. So we can say that the this 55% of uh, electric vehicles new orders in Europe and 30% of uh, electric vehicles new orders in in India are in line or aligned with our uh, strategy for the electrification in the future. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thanks, you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. The next question is on the line of Mimi Shah from MK Investment Managers Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, so I had a few questions on our Euro business. Uh, so if you could just highlight uh, on the passenger vehicle segment of uh, the Europe uh, European business, uh, what would have been the decline there? Or would that, would that be in line with the market decline? Or uh, will it be lower, higher, some sense on that? Uh, Nimish, uh, you are saying our PV segment revenues, are they in line with the market uh, drop? Yeah, for the Europe business. So if you look at, you know, we have said our European, uh, you know, in the European market uh, has dropped by about, uh, uh, is about 7%. 7%. 7%. 7%. 7%. 7%. It has dropped 7%. And, uh, uh, and you know, there is, of course, a larger metal castello drop. So if you put those together, you will you'll be able to explain the revenue drop in, in Europe. Yes. Yes, yes, sir. Because we have to clarify our passenger 14 business in the Q2 dropped 6% compared to the 7% of the drop of the market. But due to the metal cartelos, 30% drop approximately gives us this minus 11% that we drop in, in the Q2 in Europe. That's the explanation. I mean, 6% in passenger cars, 30% in metal castello average, or the, the, the mean of, this, of these two figures is minus 11%. Got it. Uh, and uh, the uh, what would be the monthly run rate for us for uh, uh, in metal castle now? I believe last quarter it was around five uh, five billion or something. Five billion, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I can tell you in, in million euros we are now monthly selling about four million euros for four and a half million euros. That is yes, about five billion rupees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, now, do you expect this to stabilize, or do you see some more pain uh, for metal cash flow and uh, probably uh, stabilize by the year end? Uh, some so some sense on metal cash flow. Oh, we, we can say that the metal cash flow's uh, evolution will be similar in the next quarters. That's what we see in the in the forecasts from our customers. So we see this stable. Uh, turnover level in the, till the end of the year, more or less. There is no further drop. I mean, well, that is also the positive news. We say that we are already in the bottom, in the bottom of the of the cycle. Now we think that we need to wait uh, until the U.S. elections, and after that, uh, probably in Q125, we will see the revamp of the of the market again. Okay, that's our expectation. Got it. And uh, just one last question. So you uh, mentioned uh, in your opening remarks that you are now taking some corrective actions uh, for the European operations based on the revised uh, 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 demand outlook. Uh, so if you could just uh, hide, uh, uh, give some more color on that. So do we anticipate uh, our margins to inch back to those uh, 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 long-term averages? No. Just some color on that? No. The, the actions are mainly cost cutting actions uh, in order to align the the general costs of the factory of the companies to the reality of our turnover okay. you can imagine we are uh, eliminating all the temporary workers we are eliminating all the extra uh, hours that we sometimes have in in our factories let's say extra sheets and all these kind of things has been fully eliminated 
also we are also reviewing our general uh, structure costs in order to to keep them at the minimum level and then we are also uh, let's say advancing certain uh, holidays so we can balance our order book with the demand of the uh, and, and the availability of the people so the idea is to try to minimize our cost level and wait until the market comes back again. So there's not any special overaction. Got it. Yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parate from Quest Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. So this question is for uh, Ender. So Ender, in Metal Castle, we have seen uh, several years, I mean, flip flops kind of a thing uh, that once the customer comes and order book grows and they start picking up, so it throws a good amount of money for us. But what are our strategy going forward to be risking the rather uh, relying on one customer more largely? So, uh, you are right. I mean, we, we have had a high dependence in, on one of customer, one American customer in Metal Castello. It is also true that this market where Metal Castello is now uh, involved, is a cyclical market. So, we have good times and bad times depending on the, on the cycle of this, of this kind of off-road vehicles. But we are already, as, as you suggest, we are already working on the diversification. We have included uh, new customers, and also we got and we we explained in the last uh, calls that we got a big business from a new uh, American uh, transmission manufacturer for the electric vehicles, for especially for the uh, electric uh, commercial vehicles and light commercial vehicles. Those programs. Unfortunately, because of the situation of the electrification, are delayed. So that's why, uh, on one hand, we have the the caterpillar business in the bottom side of the cycle, and the new programs that should have been offset this this drop are delayed. So let's say that we are now in the in the middle of this uh, bad situation, but for the future we will see the difficulty diversification coming with more customers and on top of that with certain uh, electrified, uh, electrified components that will balance our portfolio much better for the future. So we, even though we are in a, in a let's say, weak situation um, from the turnover point of view in Metal Castello, the margins are positive and we are still uh, in a positive situation, we are not uh, making any negative margins in, in Metal Castello, thanks to the, all the actions that we have taken and the, uh, the, well, the good management that we have had in the, in the last years. Thank you. Okay. And uh, we had undertaken a certain light weighting because of, uh, say, aluminium forging in Europe. So, what is any color on that? What stage that business is? Yeah, the, this uh, aluminum forging activity that we are pursuing continuously from from our uh, factories in Europe is, let's say, is performing. We have got some some businesses, but uh, as I said, unfortunately, let's say all the programs have been delayed and the volumes are very low in this moment. Okay, so. There is no special activity, so let's say that we will have, we will need at least a couple of years, two, three years, in order to see this this business uh, giving us a, a chunk, a relevant chunk of business uh, in our companies. So till now there is no news uh, to to say. Let's say that the the market is quite depressed in in the electrification and also in the internal combustion engine also. So let's say it's a weak, weak period in, in Europe for the automotive industry. And the export of Yeah, Bharat Bhai, what, what was the uh, question? 
uh, any export opportunity because uh, currently I understand we were at 10% and we wanted to make it 15%. No, last year we were higher than 10% from India. From India we were closer to I think 13, uh, you know, 13%. Uh, yes. Yeah, so export opportunities in India are there. As I said, you know, the biggest opportunities are there in in, uh, in castings, uh, iron castings. Uh, they are also there in gears and aluminum castings. So, yes, I, we do think exports will keep on increasing. Uh, and uh, But the point to be noted is that export businesses have a longer lead time before they fructify. That's uh, that's the only difference with, from domestic orders. Okay, thank you and all the best, Vikas and Inder. Yeah, thanks, Bharat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, one quick question on metal castle or a clarification. So, this slowdown that we are seeing in metal castle, uh, should we still look at this as a near term slowdown related to uh, upcoming elections and uh, it should recover in 325? Uh, asking this question because we are hearing uh, slowly, even US is sort of entering into a, uh, you know, that's sort of a slowdown. So how should we look at it? Metal cash flow growth for the next year, so see that very What do we have done in the in the last years? We have analyzed the the evolution of the orders in Metal Castello in the off road. Uh, let's say this is big machinery for especially big uh, works, civil works in in the US. And what we consistently see that is that every four years before the elections, then there is a, a slowdown of all the investment activity because everybody is waiting for the new new government to let's say to launch the new uh, strategies for investments, and depending on the winner of the elections, the the result is different. So we are now exactly in that moment where we, everybody is waiting for the, the elections and. What we all expect is that after the elections, there will be a revamp. Depending who wins the, the, the election and depending also the strategy that this uh, new president sets in the country, we will see bigger or lower growth. But what we expect is that for sure we will see a certain recovery and we will see better 2025 than, than uh, this 2024 that is the let's say we are in the bottom uh, bottom of the cycle that's what i can i can tell you about that i mean we are all willing that next year will be a good year but uh, we need to wait until the elections and also to see the strategies of the of the elected new president sure understand sir and on europe specifically any outlook you can share for cy25 again uh since we are already in this uh in seven months of this year uh, how do we look at Europe for next year? Uh, should we expect any growth or it will remain a flat as we are back in last, last quarter? Look, what we were expecting for Europe this year was a drop of about 2-3%. That was the, what IHS was, was saying. Uh, and for next year, more or less, the, the expectation was the same. Okay, So let's say we, we were expecting a flat market. The reality is that at least after the second quarter, third quarter, what we see is that the the drop is a little bit bigger than the, the what the IHS forecasted. So we we can expect this flat or slightly better market in 2025. Okay, it's it's very difficult to to make predictions in Europe now because of all the things that are happening with the electrifications with the with economy, with let's say the the all kind of elections that we have had and the the political uncertainty in in Europe, 
plus the introduction of the Chinese uh, cars that are entering into our market. So there is a lot of there are a lot of uh, distortion factors that that makes everything difficult to predict. But overall, we can say that the the, the there is an uncertainty. We expect that the market will be flat or slightly better. And that's that's my view. I mean, the, and it's aligned with the IHS uh, forecast. Aniket, uh, you know, just to add to what Ander is saying, uh, uh, if you go to page 23 of the presentation that we have put out, you will get uh, uh, some details on the market. You know, what is the expect forecasted uh, growth in this year is about minus 5.8%. Uh, as Ander was pointing out, this was lower, you know, roughly in the range of minus yeah. two or three. And the uh, the growth for next few years, next year is between one to two percent. But having said this, as Ander reiterated, there is a lot of uncertainty in Europe, so things can change pretty much quickly there. Got it. Thanks, sir. And uh, just quickly on uh, the results, right, in Europe uh, business specifically, despite the weakness in the revenues, we have still seen a decent margin improvement. Uh, so uh, what has driven that uh, margin improvement on a sequential basis, I'm saying? Uh, it's, it's a difficult question because the, the, what we are now trying is to adapt our businesses, our companies to the new reality. So. Uh, when the volumes are going down, usually the margins are negatively affected. We try to minimize this negative effect. So uh, as our businesses are well managed and are very, very solid uh, with the minimum structure, I think we will be able, even in this bad market situation, we will be able to, to give reasonable margins. Okay, That's the strategy. You can see that in this quarter we also get a reasonable margin in, in Europe despite the situation. So in the future, we will try to to continue with the same trend. Right. Fair, fair, fair to say that uh, there's no one-off in this quarter, right? No, there's no one-off in this quarter. Sure. And just finally, sir, uh, on your uh, debt, are there any uh, debt repayment plans for this year incrementally? Uh, uh, we have reduced that uh, that we can see, uh, but uh, uh, incrementally, do we that, uh, would we think of uh, further paring down a debt? No, I think that. Yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. If, if we we expect another uh, a billion uh, INR to go down by the end of the year. Great, sir. Perfect. Thank you so much. That's all from my side. Yes. Just a reminder for the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question, you can just star and one on the desktop phone. The next question is from the line of our escape from Quest Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the second time opportunity. And, uh, I understand that uh, our metal customer business started growing down last year from Q3 onwards. And so second half was Metal Castello was very weak. So from that perspective, do we expect that YOY H2 will be better than the second half of 24, 23 vis-a-vis -vis 24? Uh, there will be a, a certain recovery, let's say, the, in, in the next quarters, but we will still be in the negative side. Uh, the ramp down started, as you said, uh, at the end of the Q2 last year, then Q3 and Q4, we slightly went uh, further down. And uh, it's true that in this first half of the year, we are in the bottom. For the next quarter, we will see that the, the relative drop uh, will be a little bit less than, than this 30% that we are suffering now but uh, we will still be in the negative side because the, the current sales level is lower than the, the sales level that we had in the in the second half of last year. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the clarification. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of from Berlin Capital. Please 
my question was uh, uh, on an i just have one question uh, it was on an indian business so uh, are we there in an uh, so as we know our major customers are mahindra and mahindra bajaj and maruti so are we there in any new upcoming models which are there and if we are then what kind of content that would be going in if you could just share some light on it it would be really helpful Uh, no as uh, we have been pointing out uh, these are our anchor customers and we are normally there in most of the new platforms that they put out so so in terms of content that depends on particular platforms we part, you know we are as they say we are uh, they are our anchor customers and we are also very important for them uh, from a supply chain perspective so it's very hard to talk about you know content per vehicle because you know there are various uh, various divisions and various kind of products you know you know products involved suffice to say that our we have a major presence on most of the platforms of these anchor customers okay so we are not in uh, new upcoming models <laughs> is it uh, that what should i understand from this you have to understand uh, uh, just the opposite we will most likely be on all their new models is what i'm trying to tell you that because we are very important suppliers to them and they are also extremely important for us normally we are there on all their major platforms both existing as well as upcoming okay yeah i'll just uh, uh, if you can share what uh, this which business division would be more beneficial is it uh, uh, any specified if you can answer you know all business divisions you know all technologies deal with mnm bajaj as you know is uh, you know the, and our aluminum business is uh, is the one that has the maximum amount of business with bajaj and when it comes to maruti our forging business both out of chakan and bill forge they are uh, major suppliers to maruti both uh, directly and indirectly yeah okay thank you so much sir. i'll join back to the queue thank you thank you sir yes sir reminder for the participant you know we should to ask a question let us star and one on the batch one for you to ask a question you have to participate to ask a question yes. the press order on the back end code okay there are no further questions i would now like to hand the conference over to my next speaker closing remarks uh ander to you for your closing remarks please okay thank you just yes, so, as always i would like to thank all the participants for the well directed questions and their interest in our company we hope that we answered properly all the questions and with the most honesty and transparency that we could also i would like to say that the company even in with certain regions in a, let's say a weaker situation or weaker market uh, situations we have a very solid and robust company and we are sure that we will be stronger in the future so thank you very much for the participation and because to you all to you yeah no thank you everybody for your time so uh, basudev back to you yeah thanks uh, we can conclude the call so on the app of i take a video that conduct with content thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line